Hello, everybody, and welcome. If you are in a team and then you started writing your code, you're going to learn as we go on Python and as you progress in your learning with Python that people are using different coding styles. So if I'm not in conformity in the coding style with the convention that is suggested and strongly recommended by the developers of Python, then I'm going to be wasting a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of effort of myself and of the others. So Python wants you to write the code in a specific format. She wants you to write the code so that when you look at it, you know the order of things. So when you look at the variable, you could find the assigning operator, for example, in the right place. Not a little to the left, not a little to the right. How is that? Let's go further and see what does it mean. So PEP 8, 8 is the virgin, but PEP means Python Enhancement Proposal. So we're proposing to you how to write, how should the, the code, the Python code that you're writing, this, your script should be looking like. This is a proposal and now time and again, this is just a proposal. But you will see that everybody, like almost 80 to 90% of Python coders, programmers, they write in the exact same manner. So what does that mean? When they say that consistency with the style guide is important, they say also consistency within a project is more important. For example, let's say you're working in a team in a company, inshallah very soon. What's going to happen is your team is going to be having a writing model, a writing format. They're going to tell you, please, when you write a variable, for a specific value in a specific function, please write it this way. Please always, when you try to connect to this database, please try to create your connection. You're going to write a line of code to, to connect to a database, for example. Please name the connection in this formatting style or in this style formatting. So. Whereas the PEP8 is asking you and proposing to you to write it in a specific format, in a specific order, it's important to stick to that. But this proposal is overridden and surpassed by the format that your team is going to tell you to do. And why is that? Because it's very easy for you when you already know what your teammate is writing and how he is writing, it's very easy to go and locate and find specific location inside the code to do a, spe a specific change or update. Otherwise, you're going to be looking for a variable floating somewhere and spending maybe two to three to five minutes to locate where that variable is, where that parameter is coming from. Where is the connectivity to the database? Whereas if you know exactly where your teammate is placing it right next to the definition of the function, for example, then immediately you're going to go to look for the connection to the database script and then modify the database name and reuse the script. So what is the formatting style do? It does. It's just making your life and the life of your teammates easier. And it's reducing the time to maintain, to update, to upgrade, to debug any script. So instead of spending hours debugging a code written in maybe like five, six hundred lines or thousand lines of, lines of code, 
it's going to take you maybe like 30 minutes, 25 minutes, 10 minutes discussing with the team. Okay. Oh, yeah, I found this here. Yeah. Okay. So I know where it's coming from. So it's going to reduce the time to maintain your code. And now and again, time for your company is money. So the more money you help the company to save, the more income the company has, the more value you add to your company, the more important you are, and the more the company is going to love you. So it's very important to understand that we're not learning Python just for the pleasure of being able to do things and magnificent things and become like an IT and your, and your niece and nephews are going to ask you, please help us set up the windows on the machine. You're an IT guy and you brag to, to do this for them. It's going to be more than that. We're learning Python because it's going to be our bread and butter. We're going to make generate income from Python. It's going to help us find a job to do a real work in the real world, right? So this guide is very important and it's giving us some aspects that we need to, uh, to keep in order to have a better communication with our team, with other people. And guess what? If you learn the PEP8 and you go, for example, on GitHub to fetch or to look on, online for a script that has been written by someone before you on a, specific, uh, on a specific project or on a specific part of a project and you're looking for that, like using SQL queries and finding the difference between two tables, but you want to use Python to run the queries then somebody have written that code before. I want to create two data frames. I want to find the difference. And these are things you're going to be able to do like not very, like very soon, not in, in not a long distance, in not a long time. So my point here is PEP8 is essential if you want to have a better communication, if you want to save time, if you want to save money, on your project for your company, okay? So one of the rules is if you're writing one line of code from the beginning to the end of the line, it should not exceed 79 characters, okay? So this should stick to that number of characters. Would it print if it's more than 79 characters? It would. No problem. But if you have a more than 79 characters, the character that you add on top of that is going to start a level of difficulty to maintain the code. Add another one, like increase the difficulty. Add a third one and fourth one and so on. So you're increasing the difficulty of maintaining that line of code. Okay. It's hard to read for yourselves. Yes, Hussein, and hard to read for yourselves, for others. And believe it or not, you're gonna write the code. You think it's your own code, it's your own baby. You leave it for a week. You come back to the same code and you're gonna hate yourself. Sometimes you're gonna write something and you're gonna say, why on earth did I write this line of code? And we're gonna come to that later, like, in, in, in a f in few minutes so that the PEP have created, have put in place some guidance, some guide, like guiding points so that you wouldn't hate yourself while coding. They want you to love Python. They want you to depend on it. Okay. Which is good, by the way. Look here, like if you have square brackets, you shouldn't have more like more spaces than than you should. Like everything should be sticking together. Only you should have a space after the comma. No spaces after the opening parenthesis. No spaces between like the the square brackets. 
the curly braces. These are curly braces. You should eliminate the spaces here. You should only keep the spaces after the commas, after the colons. Here, when you create, like this is a data frame, whatever. I mean, like, but this is a good way to write your code. Here, a good way, like the variable space, then equal space, then parenthesis, then you have your tuple or set here. But here, you should not leave a space here because this is not the right way to write this piece of code. Okay. I invite you to go over the PEP. It's something that you could uh, that you could definitely uh, pick up quickly and easily. And I strongly, strongly recommend that you stick to it. If you start right now sticking to that pip, you will not be, you're going to do it like your second nature. It's going to come by nature. You're not going to do any effort to remember how to write this in pip or not. One thing else, for example, uh, these are the keywords. You cannot use them as a variable name. The spaces that you want to surround, like, here, this is the assigning operator. This is the incrementer. This is the assertion for like, if two values are equal, less than, greater than, greater than or equal. So this is a way to, uh, to write the program in a way that makes a good visibility, good communication, saving time for maintenance, right? And this is what exactly it meant to have all these benefits, okay? It's not a why question. It's not going to break your code, but it's going to make your code easier, faster to maintain, and better in communication. What was your question, Perrine? I'm sorry, I didn't get it. You just try with three quotes, but it's still an error. Why? So can can you write your uh, code here? I'm sorry, I didn't see that. No, uh, excuse me, sir. You already answered that question. Okay. Um, I want to know now, how can we know that we have already wrote 79 characters? It will come by practice, Perrine. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. I'll take the break in five minutes, Benjamin. May I ask a question to sir? This is Mina. Yes, Mina, go ahead. Uh, the last example at the pre-class uh, about the variables, and there were some examples with the adding and like- so We're, we're not at the variables just, just yet. We're going to start the variables on the third session. So if I'm you gonna bear with me. Ask, I'm going to not ask about the variable. It's about adding. So it was X plus Y, but there was no any space bef after X or before yeah, Y. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine, Minnie. I mean, like- as a coder, yeah. So this is very sensitive, the PEP 8. J just take it like that, okay? You put the spaces. Forget about maybe like the content creator did a mistake. But you're going to see other coders, they write like this. And you might do it yourself. Like uh, you're going to say, okay, added equal to 2 plus 3, 2 plus 3 and print add it, it's gonna give you five. So it's working. And sometimes when you look at a code online, you're gonna see like that, he doesn't put any spaces. So this is a variable, you should like leave the spaces like that and this is an adding operator. This is how should the code look like. But if you make a mistake and then stick, stick them all together, it's not the end of the world. Thank you guys very much.